There is a room somewhere deep inside of me, but I can only see it on rare occasions. This is where all my memories of her live. But lately the details are fuzzier, fading, fading to nothing. And nothing, nothing scares me more than the idea of forgetting her. But what can I do? I can't stop time. I can't go back. All I can do is keep walking. But something is changing now. I can feel it. Nothing seems real, and everything seems possible. I see it now. I know where the center is. I know where to find her. The only way out is in. Hello everyone, it is Wednesday, which means it's new comic book day, which means Dark Horse Comics is back again to show you what is new at comic shops this week. Uh, I'm Kara, I work at Dark Horse, and with me today is my coworker Daniel Shaban. Hi Dan. Hello. Uh, thank you for joining us, welcome back. Thank you. So I, um, in non-comic news, I saw recently that they have, they're going to start on a new Great British Bake Off. Oh, I've been liking it all on Instagram, all the posts. Yeah. Today. yeah. Oh. I love following it. Like there are so many past participants now on Instagram and it's fun to get to like follow them and see <laughs> where they're at today and mm -hmm. still friends. Uh, besides Great British Bake Off, we do have comics to show you today. Uh, I am not going to do a giveaway today, actually. Just taking a little break from that. Um, don't worry, they'll return in future streams. Um, but this time, we're just going to show you some of the new releases today. Um, we're in a very busy time of year, so there's lots of new releases every week. We're going to deep dive into just a few of them today, particularly the ones that Daniel is the editor of. Uh, so we're going to be talking more about May's book, Number one, new series today, which is from Jeff Lemire, and uh, Unbelievable Unteens from the world of Black Hammer, also Jeff Lemire, also Tyler Crook, amazing artist. And uh, then we also have Masters of the Universe Revelation, issue number three, and I'll go through a few more new releases uh, near the end of the show today. But that's that's kind of the game plan. Um, Daniel, you are the editor for pretty much all of Jeff Lemire's projects at Dark Horse, yeah? Yep, that's correct. And how how long, like, can you kind of talk about how that relationship came to be, how that developed? When did you start working on his books? So it's an interesting story. This is, I've been working with Jeff for how many years now? Um, maybe about four to five. Uh, he initially pitched uh, Black Hammer to Dark Horse. I think that was the first book he ever pitched to Dark Horse. And he pitched a, a long time ago to Diana Schutz, who was an editor here at the time. Um, she's actually one of the, the folks here that hired me back in the day. Um, but he pitched that and he was going to draw Black Hammer. And then uh, at some point he got wooed away by Karen Berger at Vertigo, who's now a Dark Horse editor, but um, to write and draw Sweet Tooth, which I believe was around 60 issues or so. So he put Black Hammer aside to work on Sweet Tooth, which is still great because Sweet Tooth is one of my favorite comics. Um, and then close to the time when Sweet Tooth wrapped, he was ready to come back to Black Hammer, but didn't want to draw it at the time. And so he brought aboard um, Dean Ormston to be the co-creator. Uh, and then at that point, um, uh, the first issue was done and then Dean had a significant health issue and so there was another about year to two gap between Black Hammer coming out on schedule. 
Uh, and then at that point, I got assigned to be Jeff's editor. Uh, Dean started to feel a lot better and was able to start drawing again. Um, his health issue had affected his drawing hand at the time. Um, and as his health got better, we started to plan out an ongoing schedule for Black Hammer. And we brought in some other artists at the time. And it just kind of expanded into this whole superhero universe that we're doing to this day. Um, and then there's been some other gems along the way that have been non-Black Hammer related, like this title, Berserker Unbound, and now Maze Book. So. Berserker Unbound, that one, unfortunately, the collection came out, I think, near the beginning of lockdown, mm -hmm. if I'm remembering right, around that time. And I feel like it kind of went under the radar a little bit, unfortunately. We have. I'm just trying to remember what's happened before the lockdown at this point. So Yeah. What is time? I don't, I, yeah, I can't was, anymore. Only when my books are coming out at this point is the, the hardest struggle. Yeah, we live, we live in very different like timelines in terms of when, when we're focusing on things like you're already done with these series and now is, is my big focus time is when they're actually coming out into the world. Yeah. Uh, Mike Diodato, the, his artwork on Berserker Unbound is gorgeous. Yeah, he was great. Ugh. So check that out if you haven't. Berserker Unbound, uh, now available in a collection wherever comics and books are sold. <laughs> um, Maze Book is somewhat... So most of our other Duff Lemire titles thus far at Dark Horse have been Black Hammer related. So this is one of the first, if not the first. Am I forgetting anything? That he's drawn. Uh, it is the first book. He did do a short story that he wrote and drew called The Silo that was collected mm -hmm. in Noir, which um, oh, okay. right. we republished about a year ago. Right. New so editions. Yeah. This is the first full length story. So. so new from Jeff Lemire, and he did both the writing and the artwork. Um, mm -hmm. So we, we've been kind of comparing this, if you liked, I mean, obviously Sweet Tooth, because everybody knows Sweet Tooth now, thanks to the excellent Netflix series. Uh, we've been kind of comparing it to some of his other more cerebral titles. Um, Essex County comes up a lot, Underwater Welder. Like what, what would you compare it to those or would you compare it to anything else that he's done? Totally more along the lines of Essex County and Underwater and also um, Royal City, um, just because I think a lot of those stories tend to be a little more, a little more rural, a little more melancholy. And I think that this story has a lot of aspects that are pretty close to that. Mm -hmm. And so let's uh, kind of summarize what it's all about for those who haven't yet picked up May's book. Uh, Dan, would you like to give a little synopsis? Sure. In kind of a non-spoilery nutshell, yeah. uh, it's about a building inspector named Will, who um, his marriage has kind of fallen apart and his daughter uh, passed away years prior. And um, he lives in Toronto and just kind of lives a kind of melancholy life. And one day in the first issue, he gets a call and it's from his daughter um, asking him to come find her. And his daughter used to draw mazes and all these little puzzles. And so he goes up into the attic and finds her books and all of her puzzles. And he starts to make a plan to go find her wherever she is, whether or not it's in an afterlife or if she's actually still alive. And it starts to become a story where the line of of reality starts to get blurred, um, but he goes on a hunt to go find his daughter in this maze of Toronto and this maze of the underground there and, and sets off on a journey and finds a lot of really interesting supernatural things along the way. Um, it's really beautiful. I mean, Jeff did a great job. The book was pretty much completed by the time he turned it into me. Mm -hmm. So Oh yeah, we're we're looking at the uh, Seth Meyers quote here. Seth Meyers and David Dusmalsh and a lot of other folks checked it out, uh, read May's book in advance, and gave us some some nice quotes. More than anyone working today, Jeff stretches the boundaries of comics, of what comics can be, to tell deeply human stories. May's book is no exception. Thank you, Seth Meyers. <laughs> really, from Seth Meyers. Uh, comic book, Seth Meyers. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, I got to find that David Desmalshin quote as well. We should, we should share that one a bit more. Um, David, of course, also Count Crowley for Dark Horse and Dune, among other things coming up. His star is really rising. Uh, so yeah, yeah, I'm very excited for Dune. Um, and I enjoyed uh, uh, some of his other recent movies, you know, Little Suicide Squad. That was, was good. Great. Yeah, that was <laughs> fun. Yeah. Uh, so May's book is definitely intense. Melancholy, as you said. I think Jeff's artwork is perfect for the tone, mm -hmm. personally. Um, we have, so there's kind of interconnecting line work too that goes through the covers. Can we, you want to talk about that a little bit? We have revealed all the covers so far. They've all been solicited, so. Yeah, I mean, some of them, they do, uh, have uh, a thread that connects, but actually mostly in the interiors, there's a few pages. Um, and in the process, you can see that that Jeff has, um, I believe, posted on, on the internet and that will actually show as bonus material in the book as well, um, that there's a few interior pages that actually connect to be a maze. So it's kind of cool. And I actually didn't even notice that until Jeff pointed it out. And then, um, yeah, it's pretty neat. You can pretty much make your own poster. He did. Um, but, yeah. He's, he sent us some photos um, of his own process with the pages laid out at his house. And I think we have some of those to show today as well. Um, I don't, I don't know if I prepared the ones that show the maze in full, because I think you may need to wait to see where yeah. that goes. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's really interesting getting to see Jeff's process and yeah, here we're looking at some of this uh, art coming together, character sketches. Um, I love, I'm, now I'm just absorbed in looking at it myself. <laughs> but yeah, I think, I think his artwork is a perfect fit for the tone of this book. I'm glad that he wanted to and had the time to uh, work on this himself. Um, we also have some variant covers by some of Jeff's own kind of friends and frequent collaborators. For issue number one, we have Andrea Sorrentino. Mm -hmm. Uh, very cool, very recognizable cover from Sorrentino's other work. Uh, did you did you work with Dan to kind of pick out the artist for, or with Jeff rather, uh, to pick out the other artists for the variant covers? Yeah, we usually um, at the beginning when we start plotting these things out, because um, covers are the first things that are due right away. Whenever I put anything on a schedule, um, he'll he and I will go back and forth on um, who would be good to loop in and. It's always usually good to bring in some friends that we've worked with before. And so Andrea is always great and he's fast and he always does a wonderful job. So we put him on issue number one. Um, I know we got another great one from Dustin Wen and uh, Gabriel Walta did a great one as well. Um, I don't know if we solicited the last one yet. Um, We're up to issue four. Four, I, so uh, Matt Kent did one. Um, so there's quite a few and they're all really great. Um, but yeah, Jeff and I will usually just kind of go back and forth and, and name a, a bunch of different folks approach for variants. And if they have the time and interest, we put them on the covers. I also need to shout out Jeff's. So Jeff does the main cover for each one also. And I really like issue number three because it has a dog. Oh yeah. Very important. A great Maybe one. Note. <laughs> pre-order <laughs> burden crossover happening in the future ah uh, yes yes that pff, mind blown now i can't think about anything else uh speaking of we do not have zell today apparently but i do have rex behind me so i'm sure he'll appear at some point on screen for you those Maybe of you who would like to see my cat. That cameo per episode of this it's almost like a requirement. I'm surprised he hasn't jumped up here already, but he's kind of sound asleep right now. So I'm just going to let him be. Um, uh, one other thing I would point out too that's uh, newer on a comic like this for me is um, I know that, as you know, that Dark Horse has a large in-house design staff. Um, and once in a while, we'll hire someone out of house to do the design. And we did that on this book too. Um, and the designs for this book are by Tom Muller. Uh, who's done a lot of stuff for Marvel, a lot of stuff for Valiant. And his designs are always really cool and really interesting to, to look at. Um, his website's really incredible if you ever get a chance to go on there and, and take a look at his design. So that was pretty exciting for me to, to work with him for the first time just because I always liked his work a lot. So 
Is he also the one who designed the Maze book logo? Mm -hmm. He did the logo. He did the layout for everything here. Um, he did the inside front covers and the back covers. They're a little simplistic for what I usually see from him. And I think that actually makes them work better in some ways just because of the story um, and Jeff's art. Um, but his design work is always really interesting to me. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah, I, I saw him posting online on social media about the logo design first. And that was when I realized that we had been working with him. So yeah, that's, that's very cool. Yeah. Really, really good work. I think it really fits again with the tone of this book. Uh, May's book, a really beautiful, melancholy, poignant series, uh, cerebral. I recently started finally, finally. Look, I have a lot to read, okay, all the time. So I can't read it all, all the time. But I did finally start reading Gideon Falls, actually. Oh, great. And yeah, and so I'm loving that. And in a way, you know, like the subject matter of May's book is obviously quite different, but uh, it's, it's been kind of interesting kind of going back and forth from reading that and then seeing what, what we're, what we have new for May's book and yeah. um, just kind of expanding my Jeff Lemire readings beyond just Dark Horse stuff. <laughs> definitely has a scope in storytelling. So getting yeah. involved is a wonderful book, but yeah, the story in that a little more David Lynchy horror, um, but yeah, it's wonderful. Which is very much my thing. <laughs> so, so yeah, I, I do really like Gideon Falls so far. But I'm very excited that we have more Maze Book here. Um, we will eventually have some more of Jeff's content coming up through Comixology as well. Um, uh, we have Snow Angels. Uh, so that will be released as two volumes. And hopefully eventually down the road, we do like one big hardcover. Yeah. So yeah. So that's him and Jock, so you can't really beat that team. Right. I read uh, the first few issues um, because I got them through Comixology, I think. Uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm really intrigued to see where that story goes. So I'm, I'm excited that we got that one as well through the Comixology partnership. So. Yeah, they have some really interesting stories coming up here. And um, I mean, we have books scheduled out to I think 2024 or 2025 at this point so there's a lot of really exciting stuff coming from comicsology to become print books of Dark Horse so mm -hmm. I'm seeing a question from the chat will the Snow Angels collections include the prose short story as well that's a good question um I would like it to so I'm going to write a note to myself I feel like I saw that referenced at some point, maybe from Chip Mosher. Uh, so maybe, yeah, we'll have to look into that. Uh, but yeah, I, I did enjoy the bit that I got to read of that so far. Um, yeah, and uh, more Black Hammer all the time, mm -hmm. all the time. Every single one though is new and different. And I don't like, I've loved them all and I'm not just saying that. <laughs> Which we are. So May's book, of course, is new today, launching the series, um, debut of a new series. So that's kind of our big highlight. But we do also have new Black Hammer content today from the world of Black Hammer anyway. Um, we have Unbelievable Unteens, issue number two out today, which is Jeff Lemire, of course, writing and Tyler Crook returns to do the art. And it is phenomenal. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we did get a chance to catch up with Tyler in person. He's local-ish to this area, actually, to Dark Horse. We're in Milwaukee or Portland, Oregon. Uh, and so he came out for free comic book day to Things from Another World. And we caught up with him uh, to look at Unbelievable Unteens issue number one, which was new around that time. And uh, we've also been sharing some of his cool art process, which we'll take a look at again in a second here. But uh, yeah, Unbelievable Unteens, issue two, this is Tyler Crook main cover that we're looking at right now. We also have Emmy Lennox on an amazing variant cover for this issue. Uh, Daniel, can you tell us a little bit about the Unbelievable Unteens? Who are they? Where do they fit into the Black Hammer universe? Yeah, so we teased the Unteens a couple times earlier before the launch of this. Um, it popped up uh, once in a free comic book day story. Um, as a cover, um, and then also in the um, 
Will to Black Hammer guide that we published that I believe is collected in the first library edition or the in one of the early library editions. Um, and then one of their members has been kind of a recurrent character, uh, this kind of skeletal uh, superhero named Jack Sabbath, um, who's kind of a vertigo homage in a way. Um, and then Jeff and I had been kind of talking about doing it as a mini series for a little bit that kind of gives some more exposition on, on who they are and, and where they're from. And so we'd been plotting this one for a little while. And as soon as Tyler Crook had wrapped up his run on his Colonel Weird series that we called Cosmogog, we asked if he wanted to draw, um, should draw this one. And he said, heck yes. So um, in this story, um, a lot of the main events of what were the young teens had already happened. It's more of a, that the heroes have kind of either forgotten where they came from or uh, had just put it in the past. And so it starts off with a comic book artist named Jane Ito, who thinks that the unteens, these this team of young superheroes um, are her creations. And uh, over time, she learns that they weren't fictional or her creations that they were a real thing. So something had happened to her and the team to make her forget. Um, and she gets set on this course uh, to get the group back together and figure out why and where they go from there. It's kind of a X-Men New Mutants homage with just a little bit of a darker spin to it, um, but a lot of fun and very different, I think, than any other Black Hammer story that we've done before. Yeah, yeah, I would definitely agree with that. I, as I said, I, I really enjoyed, I mean, the main Black Hammer storyline, of course, and then each of the asides uh, have had their own tone and impact. And I really did like Tyler's other miniseries, Cosmogog, um, love Colonel Weird. But this is totally new and totally different, even though it is Tyler Crook on the art again. Um, I really enjoy how these have kind of that uh, almost antiquated like flashback look and feel, especially this issue. This issue starts off just going right back into a flashback kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so the artwork there is pretty cool. Um, and of course, if you, oh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was going to say, uh, bouncing off of what you just said, the switch to like the retro art. So there's two different art styles in the comic. Yeah. And we get a cat appearance too. I threw that one in for you. Very important. Yes, okay. you know, you know what I what I need. I need some. You know, they could be any kind of pets. You know, we could also have like the goose or you know anything. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely one of my favorite black camera characters, the golden goose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was uh, the Ms. Moonbeam recent issue of Black Hammer Visions. I really, really, really liked that one because of all those like side characters that got to come back for a minute. <laughs> a lot of fun so. uh but yeah unbelievable unteens i know i i absolutely get the x-men kind of vibe but for me it also reminds me somewhat of newer things too that are kind of in that same vein like killjoys um or umbrella academy some of gerard's work i could see uh, that. yeah it's just, again it's kind of like that teen group of teens group of teen superheroes and even some of the costume designs um yeah, so I, I like that kind of blend. Uh, and again, yeah, it's something new and different in the Black Hammer universe, which has been really fun to yeah. get to see. Yeah. Uh, and if you follow the Black Hammer storyline too, it's again, I love how he's kind of woven these characters in much earlier on if you looked closely and now you'll recognize some of them coming back. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We had dropped some Easter eggs along the last couple of years and those are starting to come out in their own series. and hope to do more over time so uh this cover art is amazing and uh yes i agree somebody in the chat has has been commenting on it um we have a process video that tyler crook made which we have shared on social media but we're going to show it again here so that you can see it just in case you haven't yet um it's really well done so let us take a look at uh tyler's art process of unbelievable unteens issue number two
So yeah, kind of cool. Uh, yeah, his his work is so amazing and detailed. I I'm not sure if he's new to Instagram, but he just recently reached out on Instagram, so he is on there now, oh, cool. uh, actively still drawing dinosaurs, um, which are ridiculously amazing. Uh, it'd be kind of fun to do. We had uh, we've already done Jurassic Park coloring books, actually a dark horse. But <laughs> I would I would love it if we could do a coloring book with his like hyper detailed work. Oh yeah, that would be amazing. Ugh. But yeah, so Tyler Crook, ladies and gentlemen, um, wow, uh, I love that process video. And he, Tyler does post, I, he hasn't been as active recently on his YouTube, but uh, he does have a YouTube channel where you can see more of this and we'll share them as well from the Dark Horse channels, of course, but uh, he is the source of the content. So um, check, check out his, he's on Instagram, Twitter as well, Mr. Tyler Crook. Um, we also have that Emmy Lennox variant cover, though, which I wanted to highlight. Uh, so she's good friends with Jeff, right? Yeah, they've known each other for a long time. Um, and then they work together on a really good book at Image called Plutona. Um, and that might be the only series I can think of off the top of my head that they did. Um, and uh, she did draw an issue of a Black Hammer story. Um, that was a Cthulhu, uh, Cthulhu Wee story um, that's been collected already. But yeah, her artwork's amazing. She always does a great job. And I think this cover is just fantastic. So we've had yeah. a lot of really fun variants so far for this series. I know John yeah. McCray did one and Ray Fox did one. And then um, we had another one from Andrea Sorrentino as well for this, so. Did you, like, what is your process for kind of assigning which variant cover goes to which, which issue? Depends. Um, sometimes it's really a matter of which is the one that comes first. Um, so if something comes in early, it might just end up being the first issue variant. So <laughs> it's good to be punctual. Yes. Yes. Always. <laughs> Always in comics. <laughs> Do you have any uh, favorite characters from the Unteens crew? Mm, that's a good question. Um, I like our Jack Sabbath character. I mean, he's kind of been one of the main unteens in the background for a long time. He's just a lot of fun. I like his design. He's a good character. Yeah, yeah. What about you? I, I really like Jack as well. I, he's he's probably my favorite, but I've really been enjoying the meta-ness of Jane, you know, as well. Yeah. <laughs> Launch it, like, in the first issue of the series, if you haven't picked it up yet, uh, it starts off with artist Jane at a comic book convention and I it was just so perfect I mean it it absolutely captured both the the script and the artwork I felt like I was at a con but again it's kind of uh retro a little bit so it's like a 90s con with very bare everything just artist tables in an artist alley like the expressions on all the artists faces <laughs> Uh, it's just yeah, it's, it's very well done <laughs> and then of course Jane um, as as somebody pointed out uh, it is a little meta Jane is writing unbelievable unteens drawing unbelievable unteens published I think by Dark Horse in the comics so it's nice it's nice to be part of the meta Black Hammer verse the as, only as thing we were missing was our giant yellow tote bags at the convention to pass out I know those those are gonna have to make an appearance at some point in some Black Hammer now yeah. Maybe in a like eventual letters column or something, we can get some some photos or something going in there. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, if you take a photo of your unbelievable unteens and have a dark horse yellow bag, <laughs> you should post that on social media and we'll share that. I love it. We did make some Black Hammer uh, yellow bags at some point. Uh, yeah, those were cool. I still have a couple of those at home, actually. Yeah. A lot of different designs, different design each day, as former con goers will know. Will we be back at conventions again someday? Maybe. Who knows? <laughs> Not quite yet. So when the world stops ending. Rose City Comic Con is coming up this weekend. Uh, we will not be there physically. We do have some panels going on for those who are in the area. There was a cool virtual thing they just did yesterday. Um, did you see the, the Blackwood live thing with um, Andy Fish and Veronica Fish? 
I saw a brief clip. I was out to dinner when it popped up. So I do need to go back, but that was cool that they had that like a virtual presence there of some sort. So yeah, I didn't know about it ahead of time, but I was excited to see it. Uh, Carl Horn, manga editor, will be doing his usual Dark Horse manga panel. I believe that's on ooh, Friday or Saturday. I got to look now. Um, with Zach Davison, Zach has a ton of panels, uh, which I will actually be helping him with. Um, so we've got manga panels, we've got RPG panels, we've got all sorts of comics panels. Um, one for each day of the show. Uh, that's all I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to go to some panels wear a, a lot of masks and um that will be it <laughs> for me <laughs> but uh, i'm i'm glad that you know it's it's still going on for those who who feel comfortable doing doing a con again yeah. um well also this week we're we're going to wrap up pretty soon here this is kind of a quick one to really highlight these um new jeff lemire titles new new edited by daniel titles um also, in your wheelhouse new this week, we have Masters of the Universe Revelation, issue number three, mm -hmm. the prequel to the Netflix series. Mm -hmm. uh, I love the covers for this one as well. Uh, we got we have a lot of evil Lynn in this one. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this is the third issue of a four-series arc. Uh, I have worked with Mattel on a bunch of He-Man books over the last couple of years. I don't tend to work on a lot of licensed books, but I work on these just because Mattel is so great to work with. Um, and they're really fun, silly characters. And I grew up with He-Man. I had all the toys. I don't know where those toys ended up. I'm sure they're worth a lot of money, but I don't <laughs> have them anymore. Um, and so anytime there's any kind of He-Man or Masters of Universe stuff at Dark Horse, I usually volunteer for it. Um, and so when I saw that we were going to do comics of, of the new show by Kevin, I volunteered. I was really excited about it. And they sent me the, the screenplays for the episodes um, as they were starting to work on the animation. Um, and so this got pulled together with having Kevin on board and one of the episode writers, Tim Sheridan, also does a lot of work for DC and also the lead uh, writer at Mattel, um, Rob David. And so they wrote this great prequel story together and round number two. So, yeah. So this this miniseries opens up, uh, as we've said, it's a prequel to the animated series. So we do have He-Man, yes, in the first issue. Kind of setting up the events that are about to transpire uh the last issue we had kind of a backstory is it believable i don't know for skeletor and then in this issue it's more of a backstory for evil lynn herself uh i love the character design i also grew up with he-man i mean they were reruns by the time i was watching them for sure but uh i loved she-Ra, especially, unsurprisingly. Um, love the old cartoons. I didn't have a lot of the toys. Uh, I don't I don't recall if I really had too many of the toys. I really liked um Cringer or Battle Cat, unsurprisingly. Um I like She-Ra and of course Swiftwind and yeah. So uh Dan, if you need to look up your toys, we can always get out the toys of He-Man book that we just published. There's that, and then also um the last He-Man book I worked on, and that's when I needed kind of a break because it was had like 5,000 entries in it, was our He-Man character guide. Yeah. I mean, it is a tome, but it was also a lot of fun. And I mean, it's just basically the Bible for everything Masters Universe. Anything you could <laughs> ever want to know, all the characters you need to know. Like it even has like the cow from the live action movie. It has its own like uh, segment and description on just a cow that popped up in the background that's a very important cow yeah so it, that very important is mastering character thing. yeah <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll defend that movie and the, the cosmic key <laughs> wow it's been a long time since i watched that um and, you know, if, if folks are liking the new series right now, like we have a pretty big backlist of Masters Universe books right now. So the yeah. one we started with is The Art Of, and it was way fun to work on that book. So basically Mattel sent us like 50 boxes of material they just had in their warehouse and said, have fun. And really, I feel like when a licensor is hands off and lets you do what you're good at, you can really make a cool book. So and they let yeah. us do that. 
That is nice. Yeah. yeah and yeah, nice. so if, if you're a fan of the classic Masters of the Universe too, yeah, we have a lot of, of that content. Yeah. Uh, reprints, yes, are happening, have already happened or continuing to happen too on some of the older volumes. Uh, well, we'll cover that popped up too. So that's Walt Simonson who did that variant. We had a lot of really great variant artists for this four issue series. Yes. Yeah. There have been some amazing covers so far. We just announced yesterday um, the first of the Masters of the Universe art prints also. So you can get fine art lithograph prints through Dark Horse Direct um, of right now it's issue number one there will be more. Uh, so that's the Mike Mignola cover and also the um, Stefan Sejic one, mm -hmm. uh, which very different, both very, very good. Uh, I like the Bill Sienkiewicz cover also. Yeah, there have been so many amazing artists on these. And the last one is um, Art Adams. So yeah. Really yeah. cool to, to get him to do that. And of course, there's a ton of characters in it. So mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, the, the, a lot of different art styles. So, um, you know, if if one isn't your thing, there are plenty of other options, which I think is very cool. Uh, the main covers, though, um, by let's see, Dave Wilkins. Yeah, like, yeah. Ugh, I love this Evil Lynn one especially. So, um, well, we're Lynn. almost. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I just said you love your your Evil Lynn. I do. I mean, I love her more now, definitely, thanks to the new series. Uh, because yeah, she's she's being portrayed so well. I think I loved it by the Game of Thrones lady, mm -hmm. uh, Cersei. Cersei. Yeah. 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 Lena. Lena Headey. Yeah. 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 She's oh, phenomenal. I I really enjoyed the series. I don't I don't think I've quite finished it yet. I'm not on like the last last episode or so. I don't like to binge things. I have a weird. I I go kind of slow with shows sometimes. So. Uh, but yeah, we're almost at time. Um, thank you, Dan, for joining me today to do kind of a dive into these three highlighted books, um, May's book, especially. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Unbelievable Unteens from Black Hammer and also Masters of the Universe. Um, really fast. We also have, as I mentioned, lots of other new titles out today at comic shops. Um, this is the launch week at long last of our partnership with Unique Studios. Um, so Malaika Warrior Queen, volume one, trade paperback, a graphic novel, is out today in comic shops and also new in bookstores this week. Um, so that's very exciting. Uh, all created by African comics talent, telling stories based in African folklore and history and oh, it's just, it's good. Uh, next up will be Ianu, Child of Wonder, uh, but Malaika is new this week. And let's see, what else do we have this week? We have Another series launch, actually, Last Flight Out, number one, debuted today from Mark Guggenheim and team. Um, I hope to be able to cover that one a bit more in the future on a later stream, so stay tuned for that. Um, but as I said, especially we wanted to highlight these new Jeff Lemire titles today. Hopefully, we'll also be seeing Jeff Lemire on a stream in the near future, so stay tuned. We'll announce more uh, when we can, but for now, that's Daniel and I uh, presenting to you the Dark Horse New Comic Book Day for September 8th. Um, everything we talked about today, you can get it at a comic shop, local comic shops, uh, comicshoplocator.com can help you find one near you. And bookstores, we recommend shopping local if you can, of course. Uh, Indiebound.org is a good website to help you find uh, more shops in your area. Um, I'll grab Rex. Dan, is there anything else you would like to say before we part? Oof. uh watch great british bake-off when it comes out great british bake-off here's a very sleepy rex and i wish it was like every day of the full year during the pandemic yeah i know i know i whew, i tore through all those seasons i need more of that content <laughs> do you watch and then bake something or do you ever not retreat? really i used to bake a lot i i don't so much anymore uh but i i have developed a system which this can be a future stream. I've talked about it with Kate as well, but uh, I can predict who the finalists are going to be after like a couple episodes. Really? Ooh. I can. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <Sarah> -ness too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you again, everyone. Uh, Dark Horse Comics will sign off for today, but we'll see you again next Wednesday for another new comic book day rundown. Thank you again, Daniel, for joining me. Thanks for inviting me. We'll see you all in next week.